Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a new study that just came out a few days ago that proposes another unusual cycle on planet Earth that we've never known existed, but seems to affect the amount of biodiversity on the planet. And it does so every 36 million years. And so in this video, let's actually discuss exactly what the science has discovered so far, what this potentially means for our understanding of planet Earth, but also talk about what exactly drives this cycle and what effects it has on the planet. But first, let's, I guess, start with the basic concepts, the concepts of biodiversity and the idea of extinction, something we always hear about in the news, but something that's not necessarily well explained. For example, here's an incredible map of terrestrial biodiversity on the planet. What this essentially shows you is the amount of various vertebrate species or the amount of various complex animals present in various terrestrial locations on the planet. As you can see, some of the highest biodiversity, which is in red and in orange, is essentially in parts of Africa, some parts of Southeast Asia, and of course, Brazil. Most of it is in Brazil. But in this case, it's not really telling us about the amount of animals, it just tells us about the biodiversity, the types of animals in that particular location. But generally, Locations that are more hospitable to life will always have more biodiversity. So, for example, in a desert, you're not going to find as much biodiversity as you would in a forest or in some kind of a jungle. But this doesn't actually tell us anything about the total biomass or the total number of animals or even how successful animals are in these locations. As a matter of fact, some of the least hospitable locations on the planet often have way more biomass. For example, this Japanese island known as Nishinoshima is practically barren on the surface, but it recently had a volcanic eruption that created a huge bloom of various algae visible from outer space, overall increasing the biomass by a relatively large amount. Something very similar happened after the eruption of Tonga, with the total biomass, as you can see right here, being in hundreds of kilometers in terms of size. And so biomass by itself is not always correlated with biodiversity. And that, of course, implies that even during, for example, extinction events, which by definition is a sudden decrease in biodiversity on the planet, doesn't actually mean that it's going to change the biomass in terms of size and mass. All of these new conditions on the planet might instead quite often result in the opposite. They actually result in a huge bloom of a lot of bacteria or algae, or possibly some other animals that were previously just a tiny niche, invisible otherwise. But when it comes to extinction events, especially the so-called Big Five extinction events, we normally define them as the sudden decrease in biodiversity on the planet, with the most famous one being the one that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, but the more recent one only happening approximately 34 million years ago and referred to as Eocene-Oligocene extinction event. The event that also involved a dramatic decrease in a lot of different biodiversity, especially in the marine life, but the event that doesn't have a very good explanation even today. And although two potential craters have been discovered that could have actually caused this, one in Russia and one in the US, they don't really provide enough evidence for any of this, especially because, generally, just a single collision will often not result in a major extinction. And so even though a lot of people assume that an extinction might be caused by some kind of an asteroid event or a large collision somewhere on the planet, in reality the evidence suggests otherwise. Especially because these two craters were most likely formed millions of years apart and at least a million years before the extinction event as well. But in the last decade or so, the scientists developed even better time maps showing us biodiversity across hundreds of millions of years. Here's one of the better ones that basically shows us that biodiversity does actually change quite a lot pretty much every few million years. But more importantly, showing us that it almost looks like there's some kind of a cycle here. And because a lot of these events never actually had any explanation or an explanation that would be definitive, it basically presents paleontology with another mystery. What exactly is causing sudden changes in the number of species on the planet, especially if it doesn't involve something very obvious? Here we're talking about some kind of a major volcanic eruption or some kind of an asteroid impact. And that's sort of what this new study is about. They basically worked out a pattern that seems to suggest there is actually a cycle, and it's approximately 36 million years, with the cycle in this case driven entirely by the geology of the planet specifically by the idea of plate tectonics and the increase or decrease in the ocean levels. And all of this was based on two things. First, a much closer look at the fossil record, focusing on biodiversity in the last 250 million years, but then also combining this with a simulation of geological motion or plate tectonics using the script known as G-plates that you can find in the description. 
And in the end, the simulation established that roughly every 36 million years, the plate motion on the planet results in a dramatic change in the sea levels, resulting from either increase or decrease of the amount of seafloor spreading that happens on the planet, which then surprisingly results in a kind of a cycle that changes the total depth of the oceans and the amount of water that's transferred into the Earth's crust, which can then produce even more volcanism. And so the motion of the plates and the spreading of the seafloor changes the ocean levels just enough to then cause dramatic changes on the surface of the planet, either increasing flooding or increasing the amount of deserts and the amount of dry land, with most biodiversity occurring when there is actually a lot of different shallow seas across the entire planet. But when the ocean depth changes and the shallow seas either dry out or become deep ocean, that's when we suddenly observe a decrease in biodiversity which can also be seen as an extinction event if it happens in a lot of regions on the planet. For example, the spread of the seafloor across various oceanic plates creates larger and larger oceans and thus decreases the overall water levels over time. Likewise, subduction zones reduce the total ocean floor as some of these plates are then swallowed underneath the continental plates, eventually recycling all of this in the process. And so both types of plate tectonics can actually vary the overall ocean levels quite dramatically, with the discovery here suggesting that it's also cyclical. And more importantly, it seems to correlate directly with the biodiversity cycles of 36 million years. And though it's possible that some of the extinction events could be associated with this as well, at the moment none of this is definitive, and it just shows us that the actual cycles on the planet are just way more complex than we ever thought. More importantly, providing evidence that the tectonic plates have their own cycle as well, and they seem to influence the ocean just enough to then influence life. Now this is of course just one of many cycles. As a matter of fact, the team behind the study might have found a second cycle that's about 62 million years, but none of this is definitive just yet. As always, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Although I guess one important caveat here is the fact that this is mostly, at least for now, based on the fossils from marine animals, not from terrestrial animals. As a matter of fact, for all we know, maybe it has the opposite effect on the biodiversity on the surface. But because we don't have enough fossils to study any of this, it will be difficult to confirm this, at least for now. But assuming that the scientists behind the study are correct and discovered a new cycle, I guess the more intriguing question here would be, does this actually mean that EOG event, or the Eocene Oligocene extinction, might have been caused by this as well? And if this was a result of this cycle, with the event happening 34 million years ago, and affecting the biodiversity of a lot of marine animals on the planet, well, does that mean that we're in for another one in a couple of million years? Now, obviously, this is not something we can prove just yet, but assuming that the scientists are correct here, in about two million years, the planet might actually start changing again, reducing the overall levels of water, shifting the overall biodiversity once again. But I guess exactly how or what exactly would happen to the planet is not something we're going to know just yet. Nevertheless, a pretty intriguing discovery and a pretty intriguing study, and something we'll discuss more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on a very similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.